Hello, welcome to Rital PA. My name is Matt Burke, I'm the production manager here at Rital, and welcome to our virtual tour. Follow me inside right now and we'll get you started. Welcome to the lobby of Rital. To the left of me is our visitor's kiosk. Uh, we ask all of our visitors to come in and sign in using the touch screen. Uh, while accessing the touch screen, you look for your host name, and once complete, they will get a text message or an email show that you're on site. While you're waiting, we please ask you to have a seat and your host will be up here for your conference call, meeting, or tour of our plant. Above our seating area is um, one of our monitors. This is showing our shot scope monitoring system. Uh, we use shot scope to keep track of all of our uh, processing machines in real time. It shows our machine statuses if it's running or, or down. Obviously green means go, that we're running, red means we're down, and yellow would mean that we need to pay attention to something because something's not running quite up to par. To the left is our main office. In our main office, we have our president and CEO, we have our HR manager, we have our supply chain manager, and we have our sales, finance, and planning teams. And over here to the right, as we're about to take you, is the door to our warehouse production, where we can begin our tour of Rital PA. So we are now in the PPE room before entering production. Uh, at Rital, we take certain safety measures to protect you and to protect our customers. So certain PPE must be worn while on the production floor. Right here we have a PPE uh, guideline showing what, uh, what measures we take. Below right here are uh, tow covers. This way we can make sure you don't get your foot crushed by forklift traffic or something that could possibly fall from overhead. As I start moving to my right, um, we require all visitors to wash their hands before end of production. We have hearing protection available. If you want to wear it, we only require people to wear earplugs if they're here more than eight hours. Also to my right is our lab coats. We require all visitors to wear uh, lab coats. This way it protects our customers from possibly having contaminants from dog hair or cat hair on your clothes. Um, we also have beard nets, uh, safety glasses, and hair nets that we require to wear in production. Also, no loose jewelry can be worn uh, from below, from the waist up. So no watches, no earrings, no necklaces. The only thing you can wear is a wedding ring if you're wearing one. And over here is our door to production where we can take you on the floor and start showing you what we have, have to offer at Rital PA. So now we're about to enter our quality assurance lab. Inside of the lab, we test our uh, pre forked caps right from the machines. We do some dimension tests and so forth. Uh, we also test incoming resin samples to make sure we can use in production. But we can also test uh, sample pro uh, products to see if we can make products uh, requested by our customers. Inside, I'm going to introduce you to Heather quality technicians and she is going to explain to some what some of the machines down here do this is a CMM that we use to test the dimensions of the caps and pre -forms. And this is the color spectra photometer that we use which tests for the clarity in the clear pre -forms and test the color in the colored ones and over here are different gadgets that we have to test the gate thickness and the height. Over here we have the IV, which tests the intrinsic viscosity of the resin and the preforms. And this is the GC, which we test the AA in the resin and the preforms. And here is the removal torque machine. And the caps are in here. We test the removal torques of our caps. In here, test for our secure seal testing. Make sure the caps are on tight. This is the capper, so we can cap it to test our caps. And these are some of the routine things we run on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure our product is of the highest quality for our customers. PET production area. In PET production, we have 500 high pet 400 machines. Um, each of them can run different products. We have different hot rotors and different molds. Uh, we can run 76 cavities, 96 cavities, um, and other ones depending on your needs. We'll give you a quick overview of our P1 line real quick and we'll move on.
So right now the mold closed, we're still the mold full of plastic, we're transferring the robot. Look at our HMI, it's showing the actual process live to what the machine's seeing. Right now we're injecting and filling, folding. We're going to pulling. And now the mold's going to open, the transfer happens, and we're putting 96 pieces on the ground. On the belt. We're doing this every nine and a half seconds approximately. So we make a lot of pieces pretty fast down here. From there, when the mold opens, it goes to the robot. The robot holds four stages of parts where we continue pulling for the product. From there, the pull pick picks the parts off the pulling plate, puts it on the belt. The belts start transferring each other. From there, the belts load our totes. And when our totes are full, we'll get a blue light telling the end of line uh, operator to move, on, move the box off, put a new one on. And we do this over and over again all day. Because again, all five machines are identical, and we can run different various uh, bowls and hot runners to uh, make products. So over here, HDPE uh, production uh, section of our warehouse. In HDPE, we have two uh, Hotset 300, high cap 300, and we have one Eagle 420. Uh, unfortunately, right now, we're not running, so can't show you a live demonstration, but inside, here's the mold, pretty much the same as uh, the PEG mentioned before, we're filling, uh, filling the bowl with hot plastic. It goes into a conveyor, the conveyor loads the bunker. Now here's where it gets a little bit different with uh, HDP. We have a live um, vision system where we're checking each piece for quality. It goes through, gets oriented, goes through the vision system, it out the back, up the conveyor, and into the boxes for uh, palletization at the end. Our Desco top printing uh, printing machine. Uh, we can load four different colored inks. Uh, we can go the inks are then applied to cliches that are applied to the caps. The caps go through here and used by heat. We're able to apply the ink to the cap. And then orient it from here, down from there, back through a vision system and into boxes. To my left is our Campo laser etching uh, machine. What we do is we load uh, caps in the bunker, gets oriented, put through the uh, laser etcher, using uh, added that we put in the cap production, we can get it under the uh, under the cap code for certain prom promotions done by some of our customers. So now we're outside. This is our uh, rail siding. Uh, to my left is uh, our rail cars. Rail cars come in at night, they're carrying our resin. Uh, we sample them, take the samples to the lab, they'll uh, check it, make sure it's good quality, we get the okay to unload it. Uh, we have six silos we can load. Each silo, we hold a specific resin and we load it over and over again. And we're using our dual, our dual unloading system. So we have the capabilities to load two silos at one time, depending on what we need for the day. This is our resin room. In our resin room, what we do is, uh, this is where we load our dryer. In line, there is five, uh, five identical uh, blenders. We're pulling material from our six silos outside through the hub you can see to the right looks like an octopus. Um, we set our mix percentages based on our customers' needs, so we could you know, run 85% virgin, 10% our pet, 5% uh, regrind from in-house, um, and we feed our dryers. It pretty much is uh, maintained just through uh, a little bit of monitoring, but it's pretty, pretty much self-automated. Over to my right right now is our bulk sack unloading system. And we take a whole sack lot, we'll hang them, and uh, suck it outside and load our silos. And we'll explain about the silos here in a second. These are our inline metal separating systems. Each machine has one, and it guarantees that we're separating metal before it gets to the dryer and before it gets to your product. Hi again, this is our offline IMD resorter. Uh, we use this resorter to take suspended and quarantined totes from production and bring up here for another set of eyes for quality before we send out to our customers. We'll take the suspended totes and dump them in the dumper. The dumper goes to the bunker. The bunker then feeds conveyor conveyor system. The conveyor system feeds the orienter. The orienter will start orienting parts to feed the vision system. Our vision system then has the capabilities to pick up certain defects uh, based on the programming performed by our quality quality supervisor and engineer. 
Uh, some of the defects we look for are discolored parts, long gates, contamination, black specks, and we can even go uh, cavity specific. So, for example, we can reject every number six from the totes uh, that we feed uh, the system with. The rejected parts then go to another belt system, and the good parts also go to the belt system where the rejected parts feed a tote in the middle that we end up being positive scrap, and the left and right are good parts that we put back in our warehouse for sales. This is our rapid grinding system. Here we take our plus scrap and grind for future use. This also saves on resin costs and it also saves the environment. This way we're not putting all the plastic scrap to landfill. So here we take our positive scrap. We take the totes, put them in the dumper. The dumper then feeds the bunker. The bunker starts feeding the belt system, the conveying system that feeds the grinder. Once going up the conveyor, we have a metal detector and if we sense any amount of metal, the bell will stop so the operator can then inspect to see if there's anything that could possibly damage the uh, blades. But most importantly, make sure there's nothing in the material that we'll put back into our machines to possibly end up in uh, good preforms again. This is the blade system itself, the grinding system. Inside are rotary blades that take the preforms and grind and shred them down to flake plastic. From there, it's fed through the conveying system back down through a second metal separator to make sure we have no metal in the sacks. The off spec goes to the right. The good material will then feed the sack and then we'll take this sack and put it back in the warehouse for future use. Here is an example of what the grinding preform then become before use.